Hey guys, it's Axiomatic Uncertainty here, and I am back with the second tutorial in the Advanced Card Tutorial Series. And today we're going to be covering the stabilization of the existing suspension. So you saw in the last one it was kind of buoyant, you know, floaty looking, but today we're going to use damping, uh, simulated damping, in order to try to basically make the car act more like, you know, a car and less like a boat. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our constants uh, and the first constant I want to cover that we didn't cover before is the wheel radius um, I actually forgot to address this um, but basically you know obviously the suspension actually begins after the wheel okay if that makes sense so basically you have the wheel right uh, and the suspension should actually begin here right further up in the car um, and basically it meets the wheel here. So the extension of the suspension is actually based on the ray cast minus the radius of the wheel because obviously the wheel would be, you know, touching the ground earlier than that. Um, you know, and then obviously these points need to be moved further up at some point. So we'll address that all today, but uh, yeah. So let's just set a float. I already came up with a good wheel radius for mine. Uh, you can do this by you know, just checking uh, your model or, you know, trying to compare it to some object, something, any technique you want, it shouldn't take that long. Uh, but once you've done that, you can come back if you like, or you can skip this step. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is, as I mentioned, we're gonna add the wheel radius here. Okay, now we're gonna get onto the damping, which should be the more exciting and also kind of uh, math heavy part of this. Uh, I wouldn't have called it and advanced series compared to the other, obviously, if there hadn't been anything a little bit more technically complex. Um, but we're gonna add a damping factor. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to basically start calculating our damping in here. So here we'll have a float damping, uh, and then we'll determine this value in a second. Right now we'll just make it zero. Uh, and then in here, Right, we actually want to group terms. Uh, give me a second, I kind of screwed that up. We want to group terms uh, for a reason I'll get to in a second. Um, but what we want to do is we basically want to add on our damping value here. Uh, and what this will allow us to do is basically account for the damping in here. Actually, we want to subtract this uh, because the, the damping occurs in the opposite direction of our car's movement. But yeah, we've grouped the terms. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to uh, clamp them to always be above zero. So the reason for this is that we don't want the car to ever be uh, pulled down to the ground by the damping. The damping should never be greater than the upward force of the springs. That just doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever. So <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we're gonna say math.max uh, and then the damping, well, or the uh, the force with the damping will obviously be there, and then we'll have zero in here. And basically, this will uh, artificially force the forces to be, you know, constrained from below. Um, so now that we've done that, we can actually calculate the damping. And so, what I want to address before that is I want to show you some uh, stuff here. This is basically just an example of a dot product projection. Uh, so a vector projection basically allows us to calculate uh, the component of some vector A that can be projected onto vector B, right? So the, the parallel component of A is basically what it is. Um, and so we're gonna actually use the dot product for this, but if you know trigonometry, you can see here the equivalence. This is basically equivalent to the angle between these times the, ma or the cosine of the angle between the two, times the magnitude of A. Um, what this does is it basically just account, or it just calculates like the component of A that can be projected onto B. And you know, within trigonometry, this makes sense, but with vectors, obviously we only have the actual scalar components in each direction, right? We have X, Y, and Z. We don't have an angle theta, and we would prefer not to calculate that. So we're just gonna use A dot B divided by the magnitude of B. And in this case, uh, we'll get to it in a second, but the magnitude of B actually should be uh, one. So that'll really simplify our calculations. 
uh, and we're going to do that right now. So the way in which we calculate damping is we actually have to take a dot product, right? And the question is, what are we taking the dot product of? Well, let's get this set up first. Uh, and we'll multiply this, as you would expect, by our damping factor. Uh, and now we just have to fill in this dot product with the two vectors, right? So as I said, uh, one vector, A, is going to be, in this case, the velocity of the rigid body. Uh, and B is going to be the transform dot down, uh, or transform dot up, right, of the, uh, obviously we're gonna reflect that when we negate this, but the transform dot up of the spring, um, right? As I mentioned, I want this tutorial to be uh, more adjustable. And so if you have a rig that is not, uh, you know, totally in line, you know, maybe the springs are at angles, uh, relative to one another and to the vehicle, then we still want to be able to do this. So what we're going to take the dot product of is, as I said, first and foremost, we want to take the dot product of uh, the spring dot transform dot up, right? And this will give us basically the uh, upward vector of the spring in world space. Okay, and now we want to take that dot product with uh, the dot products or with the vector that we want to project onto this, right? And in this case, we can't use the actual vector uh, velocity vector of the rigid body because the rigid body is actually at the center of mass of the vehicle. So you can see here, it's, it's gonna be at the center of this right now because we've manually set it. Um, so it's gonna be around here. Um, and these springs are far out from there, right? And so obviously, when you go to apply a force, if this part of the car is not moving, but the car is rotating in either of these directions, right? So the car could be, you know, going up and down. This spring has a velocity on it, even though the car has no velocity, potentially, right? So the point is just to, this is just to illustrate, there can be a huge difference between the uh, velocity at a spring and the velocity of the rigid body. And so we can't use that. So we're gonna use a function. Uh, it's an included function in Unity and it's basically rb dot velocity, or I think it's uh, get point velocity, sorry. Uh, and basically now what we can do is we can just put the spring dot transform dot position in here. And this will allow us to account for uh, the factors that I just mentioned. Now all of a sudden we're going to transform the velocity. Um, yeah, you know, the actual velocity and the angular velocity and come up with a velocity at the position of the spring. And then once we take the dot products with the upward transform of the spring, now we have the components of the velocity that is uh, present on the spring itself, and now we can apply damping to that. So hopefully, once we load up Unity, we'll actually be able to demo this and we'll see some improvements. So I'll set the damping factor at something like uh, 0 0.2, let's try. And actually, before we do, do that, uh, I just want to take a look at how it looks right now so we can see the contrast in how this behaves. So you can see right now, car is bouncing, it's really unstable as you can probably tell, uh, and it, it won't stabilize basically ever. Once it hits the bottom, it'll continue to sort of bounce around like this. You can see it looks like a boat, it doesn't look like a car at all, it looks like it's on water. Uh, now if we set a damping factor of even 0.2 and we drop the car, you should see an immediately uh, decrease. Yeah, see that? It just lands and immediately continues down the slope, and you can see it's bouncing a little bit, that's natural, obviously, that's how a car works in real life, but once it hits the bottom, you can see there is no uh, major, you know, bouncing. Obviously, the car is still drifting because we don't have friction, um, but there's no bouncing effect, and so it looks a lot more natural now, and so that is the big thing for this video. Um, I wanted to make this video a bit shorter because over time, you know, my videos have been really long, and I've noticed that seems to 
hurt retention and I really don't want to make things too long for you guys if that's not what you want. So I'm trying to keep them around 10 minutes uh, instead of, you know, what it was with the first series, which was sometimes, you know, 20, 25, 30 minutes. And also this content is a little bit more difficult to digest. I really want you guys to, you know, if you don't understand something, go, you know, look into it online, Google, you know, figure out the concepts mathematically uh, or within the game engine. And, uh, you know, just get a fuller understanding because I think that'll really help you with this and with, you know, things like this in the future. Um, but yeah, this is basically what we're going to do today. Uh, the next video is probably going to cover some things like, uh, you know, adding some basic uh, forces to the car, maybe. Uh, but also, definitely, we're going to cover the, uh, the camera as well as anti-roll. So those are the two, you know, major components of the next section we're going to go over and then eventually we'll get into some things like Ackerman steering and things that you guys may uh, be interested to know about. So yeah, that's uh, it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, comment, you know, subscribe, uh, give me feedback, you know, anything would be really helpful. And if you have any non-car tutorial suggestions, because I know I've gotten a lot of suggestions in the past for more car related stuff, if you have anything that's not a car tutorial, that would be really helpful. Uh, I am looking to, you know, sort of get back into YouTube, um, and so I really want some, you know, inspiration, some ideas to go forward with, so yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna be about it for this video, and, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it.